Thank you, Bishop. God bless you. You may all be seated and the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. your neighbor, give them a high five, tell them Jesus loves you. And you are in the right place. I thank God this morning. My name is Francis Jenga Yatol. And I'm born again. I love the Lord so much. God saved a few years ago. And uh, 2nd November, 24 years ago. And uh, I have enjoyed fellowship with the Lord. The more I serve him, the sweeter he glows. And I will continue to serve him. Just like our bishop tells us, uh, there is a song we always sing here. I serve him because I love him. Uh, as, as bishop has introduced me, most I work in learning institutions. I speak in high schools. This year I've spoken to about 117 schools and prayed for about 730 souls to give their lives to Jesus. One of the greatest things that I do is that I don't pray for them. When I have an opportunity, when I invite them, I call somebody to pray with them. Then I also repeat the prayer. So I renew my commitment to Christ when I'm praying for people to get saved. Amen. I'm married to one lady. Her name is Virginia Jenga. She's not alone. She's out for a mission. And I have a daughter, maybe you saw her two weeks ago on Rauka, Rauka, called Victoria. She's now in class eight. We, uh, 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 oh, we are in church. Yeah, sorry for that. But some of you told me that you saw her, and she has been a blessing to my life as well as my wife. So I want to bring to you the word of God. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Uh, last Sunday I was not in, but the other Sunday I was in, and Bishop told us, we should not be intimidated. So guess what? I'm not intimidated. I want to bring to you the word of God, which has power, the power to change your life and the power to affect you for better. Turn with me in the book of John. The Gospel of John, chapter number five. John chapter number 5, I'll read from verse number 1 up to verse number 9. I want to be brief a little bit because of time. I pray that God is going to minister to your heart. The Bible says, Now after this there was a feast of the Jew, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now they are at Jerusalem, by the ship's market was a pool named in Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five perches. And in this lay a great multitude of impotent folk of the blind, the halt withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season in the, to the pool, troubled the water, and whomever entered into the pool first, after the troubling of the water, was healed of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there for 38 years. When Jesus saw her, saw him uh, lie there, knowing that he had been there for a long time, he asked him, Will you like to be made whole? And the impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the water. And while I'm coming, another one steps in before me. And Jesus said, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. May God bless his word. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the entrance of your word. Bring light to our feet. And I pray the sharing of this word, my Father God Almighty, will come a long way, my Father, to bless the heart of someone, and to help them, my Father, rise, take up their mat, and walk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to share a message that I will call Keeping Hope Alive. You know, this is a man's week. And today, as I speak here as a man, I want to tell you that men are very hopeful. Men are very hopeful. Men are very hopeful. 
You, I don't know whether you have ever imagined it, especially if you are married, that a man took you from where you were to his house with hope. <laughs> that you will remain there for the rest of your life. Oh, God. But I'm here to share the message of God. So let me tell you, the gospel of Jesus Christ is about three words. And you have to be keen on this. Three words. Whenever the gospel is preached, there are three words that you will never miss. And the first word is hope. If you ever hear a message that is not giving you hope, whether it is coming from a mighty prophet or a minor prophet, that is not a message from God. Because a prophet should give you direction. At least he should give you a way out of your situation. A prophet should not just read your palm and tell you you've been bewitched by your neighbor. But uh, uh, above that, he should give you a way out of it. The gospel is about hope. The word hope is, uh, comes from a Hebrew. Is, is the Hebrew word for the word called. It is a connection between point A and point B. Just like there is a connection from where I'm speaking, although this is a cordless microphone, there are no cordless speakers. For my voice to be picked, there is a connection between where I am to the speakers. The same case, when there is hope in your life, you feel a tag with your expectation. There is a connection between you and where God is taking you. The second word uh, that the gospel emphasizes is faith. Now you know about faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The assurance of things not seen. But in a layman language I will tell you faith is a deliberate attempt to take God seriously. If God says he will bless you, take him seriously. Did I get an amen? Amen. If God says he will lift you up, take him seriously. If God says we'll get out of this tent to the church, take him seriously. And if he says that your family will be blessed, better take him seriously. Are you sure to say faith become a roof? You cannot smell, you cannot smell uh, chapatis that are being cooked in Madare. Never. Whenever you feel like I can smell it, know that it is not very far. When God allows you to perceive it into your spirit, he's just about to manifest it. I tell you, if you can accommodate it in your spirit, you can accommodate it in your pocket. Now let me say that again. And you know the good thing about our pockets. Sometimes I realize that you don't need to carry a million while feeling it heavy. You can carry it in form of a paper. So if you can accommodate it in your spirit, you can accommodate it in the physical realm. The last word is love. That's the, the, the three words that are common in the Bible. And uh, if you, you, you see, you will always see them. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 13. You will see them. The book of Colossians. You will see them in the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 1, from verse 4, 4 to 5. You will see them in the book of Romans, chapter 1. Uh, no, chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. Those words are forever together. But the story that we have read is about Jesus going to Jerusalem. And the Bible says that Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And behold, by the ships a gate lies a pool that was called Bethsaida. You follow that story and the story says that uh, at a certain time they are laid a multitude of people. The impotent, the old, the blind. For at a certain time an angel would come down, stir the water. Whomever came in first would be healed from whatever disease they had. The Bible says that now there was a certain man who was there for that eight years. And that man was waiting for the stirring up of the water. But Jesus appeared. And when Jesus appeared, he asked the man a question. But this man tried to answer the question by 
beginning a story. And finally, Jesus commanded him to rise up, take his mat, and walk. I'll just speak in point form so that you understand me. Uh, I am a teacher, an informal teacher. The first thing for you to keep hope, be divinely praised. That is about position. <coughs> if you want to keep hope alive, check your position. And you tell your neighbor position. position. You must be divinely praised. I have realized that God does not just visit everywhere. Although God is everywhere, he is omnipresent, his manifest presence is not everywhere. You did not hear me well. God does not manifest anywhere. For you to be met with God, for you to be visited. Our oh, God is a visiting God. Can you look at your neighbor and tell him, I believe in a visiting God. God will always visit. From the very beginning, God visited Adam and Eve. He can visit you today. And like men, when men visit you, they make you a little bit uncomfortable. They make you behave like you are not very normal. You know, when you are preparing for a visitor, you do what you don't do on normal cases. They disturb your peace and comfortability. But when God visits you, oh my God, he makes you even more comfortable. A visit from God will mean a change of your life. But for God to visit you, you must be divinely praised. God does not visit everywhere. I usually ask people, if a person in the bar would tell you they want to get saved, where would you pray for them? In the bar or take them outside? Take them outside. Good. Me, I will pray them in the bar. Why? Because if God showed up there, why not manifest him there? But I want to tell you it will be very rare to see a person say he wants to get saved in a bar. Even if you are leading a worship chorus there. <coughs> why? Because that's not a place where God manifests. Today, God does not visit a place. He visits as condition and atmosphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for you to be visited by God, you must create an atmosphere. Look at what the Bible says. That there was a pool named Bethsaida. The in, that word Bethsaida means house of grace. House of grace. Where there is grace, God will come. Amen. Where grace is acknowledged, when you come to a point as an individual and realize it's not about me, it is because of the grace of God then God will visit your life. And I want to say this to you. You need the grace of God more than yesterday. And the grace of yesterday cannot operate today. You need the grace of God every other morning. By the way, here at Kiwango, Let me give you an example. Oh my God. I have a small car that helps me move, move along. My small car is good. Before I had a car, I was in charge of my affair. Na I was in charge of my affair, I was in charge of my Leo, I was in my affair. When you don't have a car, you need the grace for fare. When you get a car, you need the grace for stations, metro stations, other police stations. You need that grace. <laughs> Am I speaking the truth? Yes. The grace that I need for my car is not the grace that Bishop needs for his car. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you are still operating in the grace of yesterday, that's now your problem. Kama ukona bwana hana pesa, unaitaji neema ya mtu wa kona bwana bila pesa. Kama mimi. Wakati tulikuwa na mka wangu bila pesa, alihitaji neema ya kuwa na bwana bila pesa. Na muajia 50 adipange. That the day is excellent. But we are not going to do that. Kine tu tu ifanya. Wale ni present we disay mahawa unagi kama tu nakura. Because there is no day we did shopping. It is shopping sasa. Our food would feed in her hard work. 
kwani siku ya kumi kumbe ya kumi hiyo unahitaji kubeba na chondo until they said at kurangi god is so good ukipata bwana wako na pesa unahitaji neema ya bwana wako na pesa kwa sababu saa zingine utaibia kwa mali yake usikie inanuka manashi kiasi you need to a grace in the place that you are operating. I realize my father bishop said this several times. When you are in a suit like I am, you need the grace of a suit wearer. Because when you are wearing a suit, there are some hotels you get in. But my car is very far. 
by very far I was being, if you can see it, maybe I was a macho. Some of your friends can see your blessings. When a person invites you as a chief guest, please don't tell them that you have a loan, you have a lot of problems. They can see the money. Just tell them you are committed elsewhere. So some of us have a problem correcting what now God can see us, isn't it? Somebody looks at, you know sometimes the student think I am the senior pastor, the reverend church, Casalanda <laughs> I tell them not. I tell them I am only senior from a different position. Yeah. Please, when people see you like you are very rich, don't start explaining your condition, your situation. There is a God who can take and call an angel to come and affect your atmosphere. Number three, check what defines you. Check what defines A lot of people are defined by their situation. A lot of people are defined by their condition. I want to bring you to speed on a story of a man called Gideon. Gideon was the smallest from the smallest. His identity was in terms of size. He was equated with something that you cannot imagine. But when God looked at Gideon, he never called him the smallest. He called him mighty. Because the way God sees you is different from the way you see yourself and the way others see you. I want you to go to the mirror and convert that mirror to be the word of God and look at yourself from the lens of the word of God. You have used the wrong frame probably for a very long time. That's why are we being told don't be intimidated. Why are we being told not to be intimidated? Your condition is different from you. Ask the doctors. When the doctors, you go to a doctor. I'm not, a, I'm not one I'm aspiring to be. <coughs> yeah, I'm on that route. And route to <laughs> be a doctor. But let me tell you something. Doctors, when they, you go there, they first of all ask you a name. When you tell them, my name is Francis Jengayatol, they write the name. Then the age. I have not known why the age. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the dose. <laughs> because every age is a certain grace. <laughs> Usually tells us the older the vehicle, the greater the maintenance. <laughs> and I also like something that the doctors does. They ask you, what are you feeling? You give them the symptoms. In that, they do something we call understanding. The word understanding comes from two words, under and study, going beyond the service. Are you getting what I'm saying? They go beyond the service. Then they do something. That word understanding is what they call in Greek gnosis. Then what they do is that by analyzing your facts, they come to understanding. They do diagnosis. They arrange facts to come to a conclusive remark. And they tell you, you have malaria. They don't tell you you are the malaria. <laughs> so if you have malaria, you are different from the malaria. Your condition is different from you. Can I get an amen? amen? And that's where you should rise up and know I am different from my condition. My situation should not define me. Let the poor say, let the weak say, to be defined by some things. You know, you might think I am, you might think that I am not brown, but in my family I'm one of the brown ones. <laughs> that does not matter. It's, you see, people see differently. 
Wajerumani ndio wako na shida ya kuona. Bara Yesu arese hata ile urefu wetu kuna mwingine anaona nikiwa mfupi kuna mwingine anaona nikiwa mrefu. So we see differently. Your opinion for now might not count. When it comes to my identity, the opinion of God comes. This morning I know maybe you are there you are so hopeless because you think you are defined by your situation. Nilipokuja Nairobi I love something that I was told by Bishop. He told me in this Zimmerman there stays lecturers and hawkers. You are the one to decide you will stay like a lecturer or a hawker. <laughs> I have never forgotten that. So every time I wake up, I dress like a lecturer. <laughs> I might not be formally lecturing, but in my capacity, I also feel like one. I feel blessed. Amen. Let me wind up. I will tell you that the other thing that you need to do for you to keep hope alive. After you know your identity, and by the way, it's good that I tell you this, there are three things in a name. You know, there are three things in a name. But the first thing in a name is identity. When you hear Pastor Jenga, you will think of my identity, isn't it? When I go to Inoro TV, I speak in the morning on Mondays sometimes, and when I speak, people come to the gate, they ask for Pastor Francis. Then they are told Pastor Francis is in the office. Unfortunately, Pastor Francis is not conversant with Inoro TV. Isn't it? So we take it to the next level. In a name, there is character. People don't think in letters. Ukisikia kuku, you don't think of KUKU, -K you think of Kokogiko, isn't it? People think in terms of pictures. Am I speaking the truth? You do think in terms, you, we don't think in terms of letters, we think in terms of pictures. So when your name is mentioned, people remember you are character. They remember your character. That's why it's good to check your character. I've done a BCD called Five Characters of Successful People. I say characters are mental and moral qualities that makes you different. Mm -hmm. If you want to be different, then you must check your character. Okay? And in a, in a name, when we hear of Honorable Kenoti, you don't think of K-I-N-O-T-I. -I. No. You think of Warasue. <laughs> We think in terms of. We think in terms of. And finally, every naming done by a person with authority turns prophetic. Amen. Yeah, so in a name, there is prophecy. That's why you must re refuse any form of harmful label. Mtu wa kikuangaria kuhitem jinga, kata hiyo anaka sana. Mtu wa kikuangaria kwabia hiyo unajua ukuangi na kitu, kata hiyo sana. I took my mission. Sometimes back, when I came to this church, there were some land that was being sold in Royal. Uh, 250. I didn't There are some announcements that look irrelevant to some of us, isn't it? Okay. But you see, I later realized, I, I just later realized that sometimes we deny ourselves a lot of opportunities. And how we deny ourselves a lot of opportunities is because we define ourselves by our situation. Today, if I see an announcement here, the owner of Mercedes Benz, I look keenly. I don't own a Mercedes Benz, but I know some people mistake my car with a Mercedes Benz. So, I do it at Kimi. Every time I see an announcement that looks like I can fit in. You know, some prophecies are not individualized. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Mungu akisema kuna mutu atabariki, you can fit that frame. Swear ni mutu.
accept divine delay. Look at your neighbor and tell them, accept divine delay. As I continue, I would like to remind you, we learned of a story of the people who were hot, impotent. They were hot, impotent, uh, incapacitated, they were blind. Those people were defined by their problems, okay? Hapo, hakuna mtu, abaya najulika na jinarake, najulika na mama haoni, musee mwikine ya kona mugu mbaya, hao walitulika na kwasida zao. But there was another man in the same place who refused to be identified by his problem. He was identified by 38 years of waiting. I want you to be identified by your moment of waiting upon the Lord. Do not let people know you by your problem. I have known that the more people know about your problem, the more they refuse you and don't take you for real. I realize that sometimes you might be asking a person to give you some money and they give you and they have a very big loan. A bigger loan than you. Sometimes they say my money, they they feel it's also relative. Kwa sababu kuna watu wanaaminia Mungu mambo makubwa mpaka kubeba shida za wengine. Na mwingine hata zake anataka kupea wengine. Do not accept to be defined by your problem. May people know you by your potential. Let me say that. May people know you by your potential. May people know you by your potential. Because it does not matter. I think I have some I don't know whether I have 100 shillings here. Whether you know it, whether you step on it, it does not lose its value. Why do we lose value as Christians simply because we are going through something? You must accept divine delay. Yes. Look at your neighbor and tell them, mine is not a deadly delay, it's a divine delay. I want to tell you this. I have checked from the Bible and I've realized that the longer the waiting, the greater the miracle. Amen. You know, there are some people whom getting a child is normal. To others, getting a child is a miracle. Isn't it? There are some people whom getting a husband was just a normal process of life. There are others whom kumpata yeye ilikuwa baraka. Maybe they look like me. Ni hata sasa wetu na alikuwa na miaka 103. Aliniangalia akaniuliza wewe na hiyo mwanya yako, hauna nani mtu anaweza kukupenda? Mushi was wondering, ajaona msichana kwangu. Na anataka kuona na aweza hao mtu anafanana haja. You know there are some people who are very funny. Old. But still fashionable. No, accept divine delay. Lazarus was delayed in the tomb for four days. Are it not for that, you are you would not be hearing of Lazarus. Hannah waited for God. with a difference. Isn't it? I want you to look at this situation and regardless of how long you have waited upon God, believe it! The longer the waiting, the greater the miracle. Finally, be focused. This man remained at a certain point for 38 years. He was not misinformed. And I like when Jesus asked him, would you like to be healed? Some people are so mad about the answer of this man. story. Nani anaweza kaa pahali for 38 years na akose story. <laughs> Nani hapa tumekua na yeye hapa. Na wekine kama my friend Kimbira. Amekaa hapa aliona kanisa ikiwa imeakalia na kule. Ikapetiswa, ikaperekwa na huku. Ikapomorewa. Can you ask him and he miss a story? Look at your neighbor and tell them I have a story. The way you came to Nairobi I know is another story, isn't it? Now, the way you struggled is another story. Yes. The, the way my sister sent some food.
good to my house because I have left the house not willing ray, not even unwilling ray, but with nothing by faith. <laughs> it's a story. But please, we have a story. When I, I went, I visited a chief friend of mine and he was distributing relief food. I might need relief food. I didn't pay 15 kgs of rice. And the same people who we are saying, come out to brag you are one of the most You are pastor, me am one, and you can't be a school, you are Everybody has a story. Look at your neighbor, tell them I got a story. Let, let me give you three steps of summarizing your story. This man summarized his story in three steps. Number one, he said, I have no man. I have no man. What you need in your life probably is not even God. It is God to send a man. Do you think a man who stayed in a certain position for 38 years, we are people who were there. But the people who were there were maintaining him in his position. You need a man who will not maintain you in your position. But a man who will prepare you to the next level. Ah, you did not hear me well. You don't need a man to maintain you in your situation. When I came here, Bishop did not maintain me in my position. That's what I did. I got healed. I am working. And I'm working very well. Through these days, I'm looking forward for the invitation by the president. Because the last time the president invited me to State House, see Gwenda. Ati Kwanini? Fair. This day, if he invites me, I don't know what I will do, but I will not lack a Prado, hire a driver, and I will be, uh, my reserved parking will be occupied. <laughs> Every one of us has got a story, but whomever you need is a man to take you from a position of dependence to independence, to take you up from a position of begging to a position of taking up your mat and walking. Yes. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I need a man. You need a man. That's why these are men weak, so that you may understand. Men can affect your destiny. If you are going to be blessed, blessings are not going to come from heaven directly. Yenda kwa mkutano moja mbili ya kasema, Mungu, amesema atatuletea vyo. Directly. Mimi nikisikia zinakuja directly, nitaodoka kwa huo mkutano. Hizi speakers kia kusho kutoka biguni, zita tufunja. You don't need God to bring you directly. When God blesses people, the Bible says, Give, and it shall come back to you. Good measure, shaken together, running over. Shall men, not by, shall God, but shall men. Your blessings are attached to a man. That's why the Bible says, believe in God, and you will be established. And believe in his prophet, and you will, be, you will prosper. That means establishment is God's business. Prosperity has something to do with a man. Because a prophet is a man, not an angel, not God. A man, I am here to prophesy to you. And I declare to you, may you meet that man who will connect you, that destiny connector, who will help you remove, get out of you, where you are, from dependency to a place of independence. Second thing, I'm oh, oh, sorry. You know, <laughs> Second thing, you must know what happens so that people get help. This man said, when the water is troubled, so he stayed there knowing how people receive their miracles. You know, the problem we have is that people tell us, Hey, me can master Jenga, you have any bariki, I say, well, so people are not giving you a divine strategy of Saidika. Sometimes I go to I go to the garage and uh, be a, uh, my friends, my cousins from Kisumu. But I'm a foundation is my kikui. I do farming. So me and a for the last six years I have never bought cabbage or skumaviki. So see now na yon is the mzuri. Because I did my rent. So I subsidize what I get. I also know 
and there are two accounts that every human being has. You have an account in equity, cooperative, bankrupt, standard and chartered, or you have an, another, an, another account in heaven. So when you are angry, account cannot give you enough. God will give you a top up from the heavenly account. So for every good thing that you do, there is a heavenly account. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know what work I was doing? I used to go to Nairobi. We are the man and the pair of cars. Cars And then that guy would go and introduce me and I'd be a what? Move the man. We tell you what we tell Naenda huko nina ubili moja ya kishua. Wana niita mana ikine tatu. Nina ripa nyu. Amen. Ya muisho. Ah ah. Ile ya sasa number three. The other thing you need to summarize your story in is that you also need to try. Jaribu. Haribu anasema ni likuwa na jaribu. Ibu imagine that man alikuwa na jikokota haki jaribu sana. There are people who try nothing. There is some, our, some words in our, in our bottle. Ambassador Nasema, most people are stressed because they don't do enough. What are you trying? What are you trying? Maybe you are stressed because you don't do enough. Kataa kuwa kamizu na shetani ukiwa umekaa tu chini. Jairibu. Because when Jesus comes, he does not touch the environment, he touches you. That message will be continued. Maybe it's nice. Just stand, just stand, and as we appreciate the Lord, just stand. I want you to take a minute. I want you to pray for that man who is a destiny connector and tell God to help you. As I invite the bishop to come and pray with us, please lift up your hand. May God make you meet that destiny connector in the mighty name of Jesus. May you not be defined by your condition in the name of Jesus. Just tell God something about your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Father. We praise you, Almighty God, that you can send a man, a man who is not just like any other man, my Father, who will take us from a position of dependence, my Father, to independence in Jesus' name. I pray, my Father, for the church. I pray for those that are waiting upon you, that God, you may remember them. You may rekindle their hope. You may rekindle their hope. I pray that their finances will be stirred up. The condition in their family will be stirred up. The condition in their life, my father, will be stirred up, my father. You will change their environment for better in Jesus' name. We worship you and we praise you in Jesus' name. I want to invite the bishop. And I am feeling something. I need to say this. I'm feeling something. And people who have waited for God for so long. If you are in such a condition, please lift up your hand. Let God affect your environment from today. Henceforth, as our bishop blesses us and stir up the water for you to be blessed. Hallelujah. We will sing the second stanza and the third stanza of the song that we had started. Are you trialed and tempted? Oh, yeah. 